<laughs> I hate it so much. Not Good. Voldemort. <laughs> like what? He the podcast that shall not be named. named. Right. <laughs> that would have been a fire name. I'm not even gonna hold I it. I believe me, my remembrance, which a lot of people told me is off, was that before the Spotify deal happened, the name got changed. Um that's what I remember. But other people have told me that it happened a year or so before that. Right? I, when I saw the name and Charlemagne actually spoke on this, mm -hmm. I was somewhat disgusted. Yeah. I was somewhat disgusted with the name change from I'll name this podcast later because for one, that was so creative. And from that to where it went just in the presence of the show, it was fire now that the, the, like it became like some dope shit. I'll name this podcast later. I thought it was dope. Mm-hmm. When he named it the Joe Budden Podcast, I was confused. Not confused as to what just happened, but why? Why? Is this because the networks needed you to do this? Wherever you're going, whatever business move, do they need it to have something more certain uh, concentrated on you in particular? Maybe. I don't know. I, you know I've only been in one real network meeting um and they do have their own plans for shit and everything so it's like all right maybe that's what it was and at the time it seemed that maul and rory was riding with it so who the fuck am i who the fuck am i if they all in cahoots right mm -hmm. we all listen to the show let's start one 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 at a time uh one because a lot of things have happened Mm -hmm. since we've last sat here together. <clears throat> what did y'all think about Joe's episode that got deleted that we all kind of found a way to listen to? <laughs> Shout out to, 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 to having friends that'll text you shit. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Discord. The I got mine from the Discord. <laughs> I didn't know oh, what shit. the hell was going on. Here we go on. again. I don't know why I just pressed that button. <laughs> That's stupid! <laughs> you common sense! <laughs> Discord, can y'all hear that? Have we made sure that they can hear that, baby? Patreon. Um, Let us know. Orlando, yes, did you hear the, yes. Did you hear the um, episode no. that got yeah. deleted? Yeah. What did you think about it? Um, like I said, I think it was a business misunderstanding. I think. What's the misunderstanding? <clears throat> what Joe Budden thinks of that podcast. And what they or everybody else felt is on two different pages. Mm -hmm. Like he feels, and even maybe maybe even back to the name, maybe they felt like the Joe Budden podcast would be more marketable because I guess he feels he's been doing like the visuals and him being a personality and creative um, would sell he better. Is, he does come with a lot more, and he does in the podcast space. Of course. Well, well in, in, the, in, in the media space. In the media space, yeah, yeah. In the media space, the of place. course. Everyday struggle, BT, mm -hmm. whatever, revolt. He's doing a lot. Yes, but when you do that, you take away the equality of your co-host. Are they working towards doing that? Are they trying to be personalities? And I, I don't know. I don't know what their angle was on the podcast, but when you do that, you make it centered around him, and they're the co-host rather than your co-host. Are they working towards doing this? Dodge and Trom, who are my partners. Orlando is my partner. Mm -hmm. I had conversations with y'all very recently. Mm -hmm. not, I don't know, not last week, but months mm -hmm. ago. And I said, what about y'all being in the media space? That you want us to uh, have uh, our... Mic up, please. Sorry, that you want us to have a, our own identity on the internet and work towards cultivating that that you now have a platform to go forward and do things. Right. And it's not, I don't want to be the only engine. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. My shit might blow out. It's more powerful if we all got our own shit going. Mm -hmm. We have something here, work towards it. If Joe is doing that and they aren't, it's not his fault that he's the one that everybody looks for, revolt and everybody else. They not doing nothing. How you blaming? How you blaming Joe for them not doing that? No, I'm not blaming Joe for them because I honestly do feel like Joe has a point, 
and Marlon Rory have a point depending on where their point stands. Marlon Rory, that's why I say it's a misunderstanding because they're seeing it as we are all friends putting in into this and putting into the content so it can um, grow and build. Joe sees it as this is my shit and y'all are working under me because I'm the one that has the rapport already doing media and doing other things. Do y'all agree with that? Yes. Yes, you agree with that? Yes, I agree with what Orlando said. All right, now, so if Dodge, if she agrees, if Trom, if Dodge agrees with that and this is Orlando's stance, what do you have to say about any of that? Um, I, I don't think it's a huge misunderstanding. I think it's pretty simple. I think that um, Joe Budden has... Whoa, before you go into what you found out in the second part, yeah, no, stay no. in the first part. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Joe Budden, the only thing to me that went wrong here is the way that he spoke to his friends and partners, Mm -hmm. the tone, and with that tone has has a suggestion of, I don't value you here. You know what I mean? I'm not going to speak to anybody in that tone, even if you're an employee. If I want you to be around and you being around benefits me, I'm going to be careful with how I speak to you. Yeah, but fuck you. Because. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not everybody, not everybody thinks that fuck? way. No, not everybody is your way. Mm-hmm. Everybody isn't your way. You've been around me for years. You said this two weeks ago when we sat in here. And you said, I've seen you blow up on people, this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. You still stick around. Y'all all, y'all all have made the decision to say, you know what? I know how this crazy nigga is. Right? To an extent. To an extent. There what do you say? boundaries. You've seen it. There's, there's but so much that somebody's going to take before it's a problem. I think, I Dude, think, you know, it is what it is. I think another side to this is, I don't know how clear Joe was with them about how he felt about the part that they played in the business. I think that that's where the biggest misconception comes from. Bacon, can you fix her mic to where the way it looks like mine? I don't like the sound of that. Like this? Yeah, I want to. I want to hear everything you got to say. Okay. Yeah, because I think that's where the biggest misconception comes from. It's like we're in a group, and I think that I'm the lead singer, and I perform a lot of the songs as the lead singer, but everybody else in the group is like, "No, you're not the lead singer." And it's like, all right, is somebody going to tell me that directly? Did we agree to that? Or are y'all going to sit there and continue to let me walk around thinking that this is my position? Does that make sense? I think you're all wrong. I think each and every single one of y'all are wrong. That's fine. And the reason why I say that is because everybody knew Joe Button is Joe Button. Everybody understood that he was the driving force. Everybody understood that this was his podcast, that people looked at it as his podcast, and that these were his partners, but don't know exactly where they stand in ownership. Nobody really knew, or even they didn't know. Joe don't, I don't even think Joe knows, you know, as far as what's really real. We just know that he's the figure. If you look at the Breakfast Club, who's the person on the Breakfast Club that people come to see? Technically, DJ Envy. Technically. Why you say that? Because he is the, he, when you hear it, when they say the title, DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God, you will never hear Charlemagne's name first. DJ Envy Nobody is the comes focal to point. Give a fuck about DJ Envy. That's why I said technically, because if you're talking about how we feel, I would only watch it to listen to Charlemagne. But he's techni- the person. But he's not. That's why DJ Envy mm-hmm. sits where he sits and mm-hmm. Charlemagne and Angela sit over here. Mm-hmm. DJ Envy is that focal point. Nah. He's he the is. A- he's the A mic. Nah. He is the A mic. Trom, you agree? No. It's not, but that's what I'm, I'm talking about. Trump. Technically, over what it really is. I mean, it's semantics. Whose name came first? Everybody knows that Charlemagne is the star of the show. That's what it There's is. There's no show without Charlemagne. That, that, but that's not. That's the not. Point. That's not the question. That's not the point. Y'all missing the point. Yeah, that's not the question. And on top of that, actually, it's my question: How the fuck are you gonna tell me what question it is? No, it is your okay, question. No but problem. what we're saying is question. your question. But your the way that you ask I said, that who question. Who do they come to see? Nobody comes to see the Breakfast Club, though. They come to see. Who's the guest on the Breakfast Club? Mm, nah, I disagree. Not really. I disagree. Come and on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Fuck shit. Hold on. That's and no, I am right. People come to the Breakfast Club because it's a radio show Yo, that's who very guest based. Say? If that's the case, Bacon. then why wouldn't and so Bacon. any three people can just <laughs> run a radio show? 
You're basically saying like yes, any, three, any three people could run a radio show if they get the type of guests they got. Any three people do run radio shows depending on the and guests And they're they not have. the Breakfast Club and they're not wildly successful yes. and those people don't want to exactly. come to those shows. All right, I have a question. Yes, well, yes, ma'am. Hot 97. Yes. Ebro, Rosenberg, the lady. What's her name? Laura, Laura. Styles. Laura Styles. Cool. The lady. Who is the focal point there? I think that's a different dynamic, but I think Ebro has made it about him. Yeah. Even though I would probably more listen to for dynamic between Ebro, Rosenberg, Shawnee Culture, Laura a little bit. I'm I'm more there for that. Mm-hmm. Right. If I go listen to that, I like the way that they banter back and forth. Right. I think I think especially when we're talking about something that's recorded, I think the way that people sit in a room, the way that the set the stage is set is intentional. There's a reason why they're not all on the same side of that table. There's a reason why. Even in this dynamic, you are the A mic. You have always sat away from us. Mm-hmm. It's not only just because you like to look at us, because you are the A mic. No, I do that. Yeah, but, but that's because I control the convo, and I need to be able to look into you, look at you, look at your reactions. And on you know, Power 105, on The Breakfast Club, DJ Envy controls the conversation, but we just care about what Charlemagne says more. Charlemagne does Charlemagne not, says. but he does not introduce things. Right. He doesn't do that. Um, Fine. That got away from us. That got away from me. Bad question. So you guys answered it through. The way you, you felt, and it's fine. I didn't I didn't do that right. <laughs> Trying to crawl up from under that bus. <laughs> nah, nah. I want I want I want my point to be shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. This is about to be some shit today. <laughs> I love Orlando. Um Brand- but like Brandon I said, said, just like how we care about what Trump says more. <laughs> then what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well we all knew that that's why he didn't get the chair by the way cause y'all was fucking <laughs> no because y'all rigged the fucking jury and that's exactly why he didn't get the fucking chair no we not talking about this shit chair. I might have gotten the chair but I knew y'all rigged the fucking jury that's so fuck crazy. y'all fuck him it's my chair you yeah. alright I'm, I'm good Joe I mean Tom hey! <laughs> <laughs> it's fine yeah, no, it's, it's fine <laughs> yo Tell Orlando, shut the fuck up. Why can't your friends know what's going on if they're in business with you? If you're in 100%, you want all the money. Why can't you just say that? Just say that. Like, you acting funny and wondering why people are treating you funny is very weird to me. Was the Joe Biden pod drama preventable? Yeah, that, that it could have been really preventable just by having a simple conversation. That's just about having transparency and letting people know their roles because then you can stay in your lane. If you're my boss, you need to tell me that you're my boss so that I can handle you a certain type of way. But if I think that we're friends in a partnership, that's a completely different thing. It's like we're all co-owners. And if we're co-owners, that comes with a different level of responsibility. So people are fucking sick. All of that shit could have been avoided. It was corny. Um, There needed to be transparency. He didn't feel the need. Again, I'm on the outside looking in, but it it, it 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 seemed like he didn't feel the need to give the transparency because it wasn't in the contract. And you asked for the contract. This is what your lawyer said. But it was all corny shit. At the end of the day, you don't handle your people like that. You don't handle people that you value in a business sense, even if they're not friends. If you value these people here, you don't need to handle them like that. Like, there's no need. I'll show you the books, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody listens to this and asks, where's Trom? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Oh, this is that funny. They really, they really do ask, where's Trom? <laughs> they, see, like, that's the thing. I think mm-hmm. that's the thing that I love about our, our show. And, and even though you said that about me being the A mic, when I was down, you took up. This was your show. I said that to you plenty of times. This is Dodge's show. She's the voice of the show. How many times have I said that? To you. Yeah. Trump, this show would not be the same without Trump. I'm able to admit that out loud to yeah. myself. Yeah. I fight y'all in the background, but I'm like, you can't go nowhere. This yeah. is your show. When are you going to fucking own it? Yeah. How many times have I said that? Yeah, plenty. That was a whole. Plenty. That was a year worth of argument for the three of us. A year worth of argument. Own it. Own it. I, you're here for a reason. Nobody's doing that to you. You're doing it to yourself. Own it. Mm-hmm. 
But if you look outside in, it's like, yo, this, I come here for Tao. Tao is the one that's doing this. Tao is the one that started. Tao is this and Tao is that. This, there's a dynamic here. Nobody, I don't know how many of them would want to hear me just talking about myself. And if y'all do, thanks. I appreciate it. it we, you know, I, I can talk pretty well. With me and this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Orlando's the sickest person I know. I had to realize at some point where my head was big and all three of us had an argument or a conversation, Tron mediated a conversation. And although I felt like I got my point across when I got off the phone, we had a conversation about Orlando and I's relationship. And when I got off the phone, I had to realize as much as you say he's a star, do you treat him like a star? Do you... Shut the fuck up. Yo, you are just a different type of asshole. He's walking nonsense. <laughs> he's walking nonsense. <laughs> it's so it's like, yeah, yeah, you brought 30, you, you brought how many people to listen to the show or your experience to the show, but he brings his own shit to the show. Mm -hmm. I can't just say this is my show. Two sides of a coin. I can't, right. I can't just do that. And then I look at relationships that I've had in the past with people who, who I respected and I thought respected me. And I remember when there were times when I needed them to help me, but I didn't want to keep asking. Mm -hmm. For instance, his boot camp last week. And he's like, yo, come to boot camp. And I'm like, yo, he can only get so far with his following. Put this shit on your page. Let them see. Mm -hmm. Retweet this shit again. Let, him, let them see. Because that's something that I would have wanted from the people that support me. But when you got this big head about yourself, you're only thinking about your fucking self. Mm -hmm. That kind of says something to the people around you. It kind of makes it kind of says something about where you where you where you view yourself and the way you view them. I'm actively trying to do my best to not be that way with my people. I've been trying to back for some time. Why are you smiling? <laughs> This nigga's always Why you, fucking What's wrong smiling. with you? Because he probably thinking of some sick shit in his head and just laughing at what it by thinking? himself. Tell me, what are you thinking? I'm a star. <laughs> oh my God. Why did you provoke him to Yo, say that out loud? Out of my house. <laughs> you said, he said Yo, all of that. Fuck out of he said all of that shit. And I'm just sitting here like, I'm a star. <laughs> I think all of us had the potential. Mm hmm. Um, just because I had a, a good couple retweets and this shit turned into something that mm -hmm. don't make me no more special than nobody else in here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm not a millionaire. Like, you know, Joe's a millionaire. Maybe he views himself as different, right? Mm -hmm. But more, okay, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay over there. I'm gonna keep that over there. I think that when we're talking about ownership, I think that what's valued about that podcast was the dynamic. I think Joe was a little out of his headspace. He's a little skewed when he doesn't doesn't understand what the presence of Maul and Rory brought to the show. It was a balance. There was an because Joe, you're a lot. Mm. Tahoe, you're a lot. Mm -hmm. People like you having people around you that can knock you off your your pedestal a little bit. That can take your shit, throw it back. Trauma has done that consistently. <laughs> fuck you for laughing. How many fuck yous that I got in there? Like, what, about seven? Was that about seven? About six, seven? Are you counting fuck <laughs> I like you? even numbers. I like even fuck you all. What was that? Uh, seven, eight, nine. All right. Fuck you specifically. <laughs> ten. <laughs> Yo, what about ten. is going on? Bacon. <laughs> People like you make me so mad, when Bacon. a person is unapproachable or whatever, as people say, oh, your tower looks this way, but they see people around them that is like, fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what we got with Maul and Rory. We felt that dynamic. It made Joe more palatable, more digestible, more human. Mm. Am I right? Do y'all do yeah, agree with that? I agree. I, I can agree from afar, I think, because again, I probably listen to a half an episode we've seen joe throughout most of his career and he's it's just not comfortable bro we don't like your energy mm. whether it was rap your girlfriends it's just you are mm. <laughs> cringy yeah it's very cringy it always gave cringe it's too much 
Something about you is just too, you don't give a fuck about nothing and there's nobody around to check you. Mm -hmm. You keep shitting on every relationship you have, whether it's Def Jam or whatever it is. That's the Baxter to hear. You don't care about nobody and you show it and you celebrate it. And it's, eh. Mm. When you had these people around you, which meant to me that I felt it was their show. Rory having been there since early on when Marissa was there, I grew to like Rory. I grew to accept him as part of the show. It doesn't mean anything as far as percentage-wise. I just felt that it was his show too, mm -hmm. right? Just as far as presence. When Maul got there, shit solidified crazy. They didn't have much presence before that. Tax was on. Tax was dominating everything moving. Mm -hmm. Tax was doing better than Combat Jack. Tax was doing better than everything out here. Everything. There was nothing moving. Maybe the read was the only thing. That, and Tax would tell me, mm -hmm. the read, nigga, you think I'm doing good. The read mm -hmm. is really doing good. He still had respect for those ahead of him, but he knew his place. He was killing it. He's the first one with a pull-up series. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget that. Joe, I seen that, the move. It was, it was very creative, but that was Tax's. Tax was doing the pull-up first. It was actually called the pull-up. It literally was called the pull-up. I sat and sat in the creative space meeting when we first started talking about it. So, yeah. Saw that. And if you guys haven't seen it, he's still, I think it's still on YouTube. And he has this amazing interview with Meek Mill. And they're driving around in the Rafe. I thought That's that was actually dope. was on his show, on his podcast. But mm -hmm. he did have some pull-up series mm -hmm. that I believe might still be on YouTube. I'm not sure. Um, but, Joe, you went and took that fine pull-up. is very, you know, it's out here. So anybody, could it could have been a mistake or whatever, but. Not sure. Um, what was I saying? Joe didn't get to where it became until after tax went away. Trom, you all right? Yep. You need some water? I'm good. I got my water. All right. Um, and those three guys took it there. Joe, your rap career did not take you there. That didn't happen. Did that happen? No. Was it because he's a rapper? No. I mean, his polarizing presence made people want to watch sometimes, but most before tax went away, we, he was there. Nobody was watching. We, I mean, he was made 50000 I mean, He was doing good, but for a rapper, because this guy, yeah, because tax was doing a buck and change. Crazy. By tax himself. was doing a buck and change. By himself. With a nigga from East New York, just from, just a nigga, he only had one eye. <laughs> Is that wrong? You're not supposed to say that. Is that bad? Please leave. No, it's just. Yeah, why not? Please mm -hmm. leave. He didn't our even have all his faculties. Alone. Mm -hmm. You fucking bully. I can't wait for tax to call. I'm gonna record him calling you a bitch ass nigga. Just yeah, for that. Yeah, he calls me all types of shit. Um, <laughs> tax went away. Joe stepped in his shoes, took his formula, went forward. Great, but it wasn't just Joe. It was the show. See, even I made that mistake saying Joe, but it's because Joe was leading it. Is there a problem with ha saying that somebody's the leader of the show? No. 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 Mm -mm. Because does that make it like so shameless? Is this our show or is it my show? In your eyes. If, 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 we, if we go, if we look from the outside of the end, however you want to place it, is this Tahoe's show or is it their show? So It depends on who you ask. I look at it as our show, but I mm -hmm. look at it as it's based off of your personality. So you are the star of the show. You're the lead of the show. Hey, Mike. Yeah, and and you can only be a leader if there's people to lead. So that's why that's why it goes back to the whole show being called a Joe Budden show. It's not like the Joe Rogan podcast where it's just him. You have other people on there that have an equal stake within your podcast. Mm -hmm. So you're not just on there by yourself. You're leading the show, so but you have yourself? other people. What about it? Is it my show or our show? That's our show. Why? What's the difference? Because we both have an equal stake in it. It's literally hard or soft. That's mm -hmm. why there's two, two which different words being used. About to, which one of y'all is soft? Well, it's interchangeable, depending on the episode. Oh, that's beautiful. I like the way you, you like did that, friend. Right, As an A mic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you, the a you are the A mic. He is the A mic. No, that's very true. Soft. I am an A mic. He's an A mic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Without question. <laughs> 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 how did that happen though? wait did we agree that you would be a mic wait, how did that happen um it happened unintentionally but it was also kind of your fault 
felt. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because you said I was already like in this space and I had the OnlyFans and every and, and everything. And then like when we were coming out with the outline, I was like, oh, maybe this would be a good idea. This would be a good idea. And you was like, yeah, yeah, just lead into it. And as a star, I say, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it just stuck. Not what then. Would you call this nigga the star? No, that's you not what happened. No, he didn't call me the star back then. But What actually happened is that I wanted to prop him up. That's what happened. I knew that he, I wanted to spotlight his sexual experience and all his weirdness and all that shit that he be doing, jerking off on the internet and all that. This is a sex show. I think that that would be more inviting the other people. So I took myself out of the equation and said, you know what? I'll boost you up with what I got going on over here. And you didn't want to be the A Mike of two podcasts. No, I could have did it easily. Mm-hmm. I could have did it easily, but it just made more sense to me to to, do, to have him do it. He's so fucking excited about his penis. <laughs> He's mad excited about his penis. Like, why would I take that over? Especially if I'm looking at fairness and equalness and Jesus. ownership and creators, creators, creators. Let the motherfucker do what he's going to do. Beautiful. How do y'all Look feel at the about, synergy. How do y'all feel about um, the way Joe is? All right, so you spoke about the way he's speaking. Mm-hmm. Can I clarify that, though? Yeah. It's different. Like you could say, "fuck you" and all that, but it's different because when it comes down to business, if I asked you about the books, that's not the time to be like "fuck you." You know what I mean? Sign. So I accept <laughs> Tahoe for as you are as a person. You can be, you know, mm-hmm. scathing. You don't necessarily mince your words. I don't want you to change. I've known you for thirty years. Like whatever. Like you don't got to change that. But if I ask you about something related to the business mm-hmm. partnership. And your response is "fuck out of here," like as if you have no part in this. Then that's different. You know what I mean? So that's what I meant by the way he no, totally he doesn't understand. value the people around him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If I was to ever speak to y'all that way, how would this go? How would y'all be here next week? <laughs> I know she probably. I know she, you ain't got to. But ask you've me. worked here for so long. Why would you just give it away? Because a lot of people have said they. A lot of people are antagonizing. Joe and Mo, uh, Maul and Rory because they was doing this shit for six years and they're like, yo, you was doing this for six years. You never knew your accounting? You never, like, he, oh, you dealt with him barking you out? Like, he barked you out? You was cool? No, like, why would you do that? because that's not the same, right? So we've been here um, this summer, July, is going to make three years for me and Trom. These three years, we are independent. We don't make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Tell nobody give a fuck. That shit, the account be sitting there. And neither, we don't mm-hmm. even ask about the shit. Mm-hmm. Like, we just let it matriculate. And then we'll, if we need it, we'll do what we got to do, whatever the case may be. But when you're talking about a big money deal, if that was to come tomorrow, then I think that our eyes would probably be like, all right, how about we figure out what's going on here because this is a different amount of money. A couple of thousand is one thing. A couple of tens of hundreds of thousands is something completely different. And then that's when your your antennas go up and you want to make sure that you are aware of what is going on. And that's what I gathered from watching those podcasts. Who is Sir, no, fam, turn your... Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I gathered from that. So it's just like, now that we have this big money deal on the table, now, yes, we need to talk about accounting. We need to have contracts. We need to have lawyers involved. Y'all going to contract? Huh? Will we go into contracts? You would sign contract? If we have a big money deal? Why? Why are you going to sign the contract? Why wouldn't we? I'm just asking. That's just good business practice. Tron, would you sign a new contract? It may or may not be necessary. Sometimes a contract is good just because you don't always remember the shit the same. It's not like I don't mm-hmm. trust you. Yeah. It's just to protect everybody. Like, yo, what, what do we agree on again? You know what I mean? And sometimes if you're forming like an LLC, like you literally have to have that shit on paper. Mm-hmm. You have to have an operating agreement every year and revise it. So why are you making these faces? Nonsense. I disagree. <coughs> I, I disagree about the whole like it being a maybe. I feel like if you ever value your friendship, you sign a contract. Mm hmm. That's the reason. I, yep. That's why you, you sign a contract, because I want us to stay friends. Because if not, then you find yourself nitpicking and arguing over, like, and once you put everything down on a piece of paper, and you're like, all right, this is what we're going to agree to, that's perfect. That's some shit that you fucking, you would 
put a frame around it hanging up like look we good Mm because we can still maintain everything else because the business is taken care of but once the business gets shaky it fucks up the friendship naturally that's why a lot of people don't get into business with their friends one that's another thing like if somebody when people are like roommates with their friends and then they break up the friendships because you start realizing things about them that you didn't really realize when you have money involved you have space involved it just is different I think contracts and things like that are totally important when you're talking about certain things. Mm-hmm. Do we need that today? No. I still think it's a maybe. I've been in handshake situations with tens of thousands of dollars on the line, and it worked out you great. You and I have a one uh, money. Right, we got an investment deal. Investment yeah. for over six figures uh-huh. right now. Uh-huh. 